Hey, welcome back to my shop. Today I'm going to start a new project for myself. I ordered the ki a kit from Hemingway Kits, link is down in the description, for a rotary brooch. This is a tool that is used to machine internal squares, internal hexes, spline profiles and stuff like that into a piece of material on the lathe or on the milling machine. It works either with the tool driven or with the workpiece driven. Um, there are commercial oil systems like this but they are rather expensive and the principle behind them is, is, is fairly simple. The shaft is just tilted at an angle and it rotates and that way it can only one edge of tool is cutting at a time and you push it through the material. Randy Richard recently did a very good, I would almost say excellent, uh, series of videos on building this rotary brooch and I'm not going to show the whole process of this piece of equipment built but a few key parts that are interesting to be made and I'll also show it being used in the end. So the kit comes with a it comes with a nice set of uh, 3D CAD drawings. Kirk from Hemingway Kits told me that I can show parts of the drawing but um, obviously not enough so you can freeze frame the video and build the this tool by watching the video because they are in the business of selling plants and kits and please if you want to build this this thing go to Hemingway Kits and buy the plants they put so much work into the not only the plan and the material selection and all that but also in the description that goes with it this is a this is a fairly lengthy these are these are nine sites nine a four sites of description how to build the sky so even an unexperienced hobby machinist that's not super experienced um, would be able to follow these instructions and build this kit and i already made one part this is the the gland nut which you can see here in this photograph this keeps everything together in the end it's threaded on the outside with a 20 by 0.5 millimeter thread so this is a very fine thread mighty fine thread and you need only one of these but as you can see I'm building two because one will go out to a friend of mine so I'm building two of these guys these are just machine machined on the lathe threaded drilled through for a, a pin spanner and then parted off the rear side will get finished later here is a cross section of the of the rotary brooch. Um, the green parts are bearings. The bearings were also supplied with the kit. Two deep roof ball bearings and one axial ball bearing. This unit can brooch hexes up to six millimeters across the flats, and that's rather substantial. I think that's also the the limit of a home shop sized machine. Um, the darker piece here, this is the punch or the cutting tool, however you want to call them, and it sits in a spindle which sits in these barracks. So we're going to make two of these spindles from these two pieces of 42 chromoly. Okay, we're over at the lathe and I have the first spindle finish from the first side turn down the other diameter you machine the front bearing diameter where the um, deep groove ball bearing goes on and this is a, a very nice very tight sliding fit as it should be oops and the internal diameter is bored to eight millimeters so it takes an eight millimeter high speed steel blank also very tightly and 
So this is all uh, pretty close dimension work. On the inside diameter, I used a boring bar to bore it to 7.95 millimeters, and then I finished it with an 8 millimeter reamer. On the outside, I used a carbide insert that I sharpened on the diamond grinder to be that sharp, and then I hand lapped it to finish. Um, what helps also, because we have a lot of um, length dimensions to to hold, is a, a good carriage stop for the lathe. Mine is a bit fancy because I had a spare micrometer head laying around and I integrated it into my carriage stop so I can move it up to the wherever I want. I can bump up with the carriage against the, <laughs> the nicely lapped carbide face of the um, micrometer head and that gives me a positive stop for the carriage and I can adjust it very precisely and that works a treat. It's This is a really nice add-on even if you have glass or linear scales on your lathe. Um, a good carriage stop always helps with holding dimensions and especially doing production runs. Okay, we start by facing and roughing down everything with stock lines. I will leave 0.5 millimeters on each diameter and on each length dimension so we can finish it afterward. The only dimension I'm going to finish right away is the main outer diameter because that's not super critical. I want it to be 17 millimeters so I can clamp it in a 5C. Call it uh, to machine the other side. Just a quick idiot check. Okay, this dimension needs to be 12 millimeter when it's finished, so now I'm cutting it to 12.5. There we go, that's all the rough turning. Just breaking the corners very lightly with a needle file so that I, so I don't cut open myself because blood over all over the machine is rather stupid. Now we drill and bore the inside. Um, I'm doing the drilling and boring before I um, finish the outer diameter because boring can change the dimensions of the part, the other dimensions because of stress relief or um, displacement of metal. And this hole has to have a flat bottom, so we're going to drill with a normal twist drill and we're using a flat bottom drill and then we're coming in with boring boring to finish it. And now we come back with a drill bit that has a ground to produce a flat hole, a flat bottomed hole. And you grind them just like a normal drill bit with the chisel point in the center, but uh, not with 118 degrees of included angle, but 180. 
i.e. flat. It's, that's rather simple. Try it and you will see that it's really not that hard. This is a 7.5mm drill, but the hole we pre-drill is 7mm, so it will remove only a little bit of material on the side walls, but it will remove the conical tip of the, the conical bottom of the drilled hole, and that's what we want. Because otherwise we would have to remove the conical bottom with the boring bar, and it's such a small hole, this is raw, it's, it's not that much fun. See those chips? The small chips here, the fine chips, are where we opened up the diameter of the hole and this rather big chip here is where we remove the conical bottom of the hole. So everything makes sense. Oh, and while we're over at the lathe, a lot of people have commented because I use a wrench on my quick change tool post. And finally, I was annoyed enough by using the wrench, so I uh, Mickey Mouse together a, uh, a handle for it. This is uh, Redneck Engineering at its best. I used an old uh, clamping handle from, I have no idea what, and a 10mm 6 point socket and tick welded it together with some stainless steel filler rod. So, and this is. While, while it looks a bit ugly, um, very ugly in fact, um, it's exactly the right size. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> um, I think I keep it. Okay, I'm using a small P-horn uh, solid carbide boring bar. You get them used on eBay for not too much money and you can touch them up very easily on a diamond wheel. And um, the nice thing about them, you can grind your own boring bars from solid carbide, not a problem at all, but it stinks. It's a lot of work because you have to remove a lot of material and when you buy um, used carbide boring bars, solid carbide boring bars, uh, most of the hard work is already done. You only have to resharpen them. So now I'm touching off on the face of the part. And as this boring bar is very delicate, I don't want to touch uh, actually the face. I'm using my magnifier and doing it visually. You can get a, a good solid zero by this method um, down to one hundredths of a millimeter or better. Now as we have our zero on the carriage, we set our carriage stop with a 20 millimeter gauge block. Bring in the stop with a 20 millimeter gauge block. Lock it and get the gauge block out. The bore needs actually to be 20.3 millimeters deep, so um, 0.1. 0.2.3 millimeters. Okay, we're very close to dimension, and I'm using the 8 millimeter reamer and some water soluble oil to get a very close fit on our high speed steel blank. If you leave very little material on the bore when you ream, the reamer tends not to cut very good, but to burnish the surface. And that's, that's a good thing because it prevents the hole of getting super oversized. I think we all had the case of um, reaming a hole and then being able to throw a dowel pin through out of three meters distance. That's 10 feet. And that's 
That's a, a nice, <laughs> how do you call that? Plop, a piston fit. Now we can come back with a turning tool and finish the front bearing diameter and this recess here. That's rather good for the lathe. <laughs> Okay, we're machining the second side of the spindle and as before I already prepared one. This one is finished, all done, all dimensions within spec and we're going to do this one right now. I take the 10mm bearing diameter in the collet chuck, clamp it and while I'm clamping I'm slightly rotating it so I make sure it's properly seated. And I'm bringing up my life center on the tailstock, lock it in place and we're good to go. First we're machining um, the diameter for the axial bearing and then for the small rear radial bearing. Bearing? Bearing. Whatever. I know, I know. I should feed harder, I should run lower RPM so the chip breaks, but this is a small diameter, short length, so power feeding with, uh, with heavy chip load is not an option. So yeah, when you do small stuff like this, it's almost guaranteed that you get this rat's nest of chips. That means basically that you have to be very careful. Okay, that's perfectly fine because this on this diameter only the axial bearing is riding. Okay, for the smaller diameter I have to remove my tailstock support. So I'm taking slightly smaller cuts to prevent the part from getting damaged because we're clamping on a pretty thin section of this uh, of the spindle. Okay, we're over at the bench and as you can see we have both of the spindles finished. I pushed the bearings on to this one already and as you can see the front bearing is a nice sliding fit, heavy sliding fit for such a small bearing. The rear bearing goes on and off very easy and same for the axial bearing here. Next we will machine the housing or the shank, but I think we machine the shank first because we need um, the shank to finish the housing. <laughs> 